Monday matinees begin right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that all children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. And welcome to the Sonic Society. I'm your host, David Alt. Yes, I'm afraid Jack is not with us today. He's very throaty and under the weather and bogged down with a writing deadline. However, tonight, it's all about the plays being the thing. Our double feature includes The Watch from WCRS Radio Stage and episode one of Victoria, Empress of the Universe from All Better Audio. So let's crack on with the show right here on the Sonic Society. From great stories to tales of intrigue, we present WCRS Radio Stage. Please join us for this exercise of the imagination with radio drama. Today, another tale from the old curiosity shop by John S. Drew. That sound tells us there's only 15 seconds till curtain time. So get comfortable in your chair as we go to Studio X and WCRS Radio Stage presents the story, The Watch. Greetings, and welcome to my little store. It may not seem like much to you. In fact, it may look like any other antique store you've frequented in the past, but there is much more to my establishment than meets the eye. What's that? You never noticed this shop before? That's only because I just arrived. No, this is... Not a chain, just one store of its kind. My curiosities, only the finest collection of items ever assembled under one roof. But beware, not everything in this store is meant to be sold. Why do I display them? To gauge humanity, the total worth and being. And here in my little store, I find out just how much one is willing to pay for my curiosities and just how much more they will pay in the end. I see you noticing the fob watch in the window, a beautiful piece of craftsmanship, that one. I obtained it from a man down on his luck and desperate for money. How much? I'm not sure how to price it. You see, while there is certainly a great value placed on it because of the age and workmanship on the piece, I find that it is worth even more because of the history behind it. But let me tell you about his former owner. His name is James Dennings, a former astronaut torn from his time not by this watch, but by a quirk of fate. Let me start at the beginning. A quiet spring morning in Florida as the shuttle Concordia prepares for liftoff. Control, I'm reading green across the board. Final safety checks read nominal. Roger, Concordia. We're reading the same here. Final approval has been given for launch in T-minus 45 seconds. 
You know, I wish my old man could have been here to see this. You know, he is, Jimmy boy, he is. Now, sit back and relax and leave the driving to us. My watch. Where's my watch? Now it's not the time to be worrying about that, Jimmy. T minus 30 seconds. My old man gave me that watch. It's been with me on all my flights. I've got a... Here it is. Thank goodness. You know, I've only had to wind this thing once since my father gave it to me when I was ten years old. We all know the story, Jimmy. T minus 20 seconds. Now can the chatter. Time for business. You're with me, Dad. I know it. This one's for you. And T minus 10, 9, 8. We have ignition. 4, 3, 2, 1. Liftoff. We have liftoff of the Shuttle Concordia, the first solo shuttle flight. James Dennings has made history today, folks. Would somebody do me a favor and collect my stomach? I think it should be plastered all over the launch site. Very cute, Jimmy. Concordia is running hot and true. She's handling well, too. But I'm picking up a small imbalance in the stabilizers. It's giving me a little rocket. We'll investigate and advise, Concordia. We'll appreciate it, Control. I'd hate to see how CNN would cover my demise. Hey, no talk like that, Jimmy. Let's keep it to business. Roger, SDT booster tank set complete and successful. According to readouts here, the stabilizer is going to fail. I'm going to route to secondary units. Try to write it out, Jim. It's too soon into the flight to be switching to seconds. It's that or abort control. I'm going to go with throttle up, and I need those stabilizers. Roger, Concordia. Switching to secondary stabilizers. Preparing for throttle up. Roger, Concordia. Go with throttle up. This is Concordia. Do you read? Control, this is Concordia. Come in, please. All right. We're going to have to play this the hard way, then. I can't reach NASA, but I can't fly blind up here. Control, if you can hear me, I'm preparing for landing. Let's see. Maybe I can tie into one of our satellites and get her trajectory. That's odd. There's no answer. None of our satellites are responding. Now what do I do? I don't have much choice, do I? I have to do it the old-fashioned way. I'll use the stars to pinpoint my location and work out my landing from there. Let's see now. Orion is just above the horizon. Wait a minute. Orion isn't supposed to be visible now. At least, not unless I'm halfway across the planet, which I'm not. This is making no sense. The stars are not where they're supposed to be. I've got to get down. Find out what's happening. Preparing for re-entry what's going on down there, but the boys have some explaining to do. I only hope I can get this thing down in one piece without their help. Where the heck am I? It looks like a desert. This isn't making any sense. From the looks of things, the sun's going down. That means I can make a walk for it. There are some hills off in the distance. Maybe there's a town or something. Whoa. Whoa. It's much easier when they roll the stairs to the door. I hope this isn't going to be a long walk. What's that sound? It's a horse. Hey! Hey, over here! I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but you are certainly a sight for sore eyes. Whoa, take it easy. I'm one of the good guys, I think. Do you speak English? Of course I do. What language do you think I'd be speaking? Russian, perhaps? Russian? No, why? Is this Russia? Is that what you were looking for? This is the good old U.S. of A. And you're my prisoner, Kami. Wait a minute. I- I'm not Russian. I'm an astronaut. A what? What kind of political organization is that? You look like a pilot, but not like one I've seen before. I can see the flag on your elbow there, but you've got it wrong. There's too many stars on it. Political? You don't know what an astronaut is? I'm one of those people who fly into space. Into space? I know the government's working on making space travel real. There's some who say there's a testing facility nearby, but it hasn't been done yet, has it? Not a reality. What year is this? 1947. 1947? Oh my god, it can't be. Right so. Why, are you a time traveler too? No. No, I'm a pilot with the Air Corps. 
I mean, it's, it's all coming back to me now. My plane went down just south of here. It's an experimental model. Can you tell me where here is exactly? You're just outside Roswell, New Mexico. Roswell? It's 1947. Isn't that ironic? Excuse me? Nothing. It's nothing. Look, I need to get back to my shuttle. Uh, I mean, my plane, and, and make sure that it's safe. Wouldn't want to take any chance there are commie spies in the area, would I? That's for sure. What's your name? Marina. I'm James. James Dennings. Do you think I could get a ride into Roswell from you? I need to check in with my base. Sure. Where's your plane again? Well, I'm going to have to go it alone. I can't have you seeing it. National security, you'd understand. I do. I'll go back to my ranch and pick up another horse for you to ride. I'll meet you back here. Is it possible? Am I really going back in time? Or is this all some mass hallucination brought on by pulling so many negative Gs? I don't know. But I can't afford to have the shuttle discovered in this time period. Even though it's my only link to the future, I'm going to have to activate the self-destruct mechanism inside. If such technology were available now, well, I've read enough science fiction books to know what would happen to my future. James destroyed the shuttle and managed to begin a life as an engineer, being careful not to reveal his knowledge of the future to anyone. His only friend for some time was his savior in the desert, Marina. In time, they grew to love each other and were married. They had two children together who were James' pride and joy. Although he had a good life, James never forgot that he was not of the time fate had placed him in. This became harder to deal with as he grew older. James would watch news reports of the various shuttle missions, of which his younger self was a part of. And then finally came the fateful day he went up into space alone. And all eyes are glued to the launch pad here at the Kennedy Space Center, where in just a little under two days, James... Don't you think you should come to bed, honey? I know you're very interested in the shuttle mission, what with your namesake going into deep space and all, but it's not going to launch for a couple days. This is just all the background stuff on the news now. I know, but I find it interesting. You know, he looks just like you did when I first met you. If I didn't know any better, I'd say it was you. Your memory is playing tricks on you. I'll be up to bed in a minute. Promise? I've got to give Trisha her swimming lessons tomorrow, right? That granddaughter of ours wears me out most of the time. I'm going to need my rest. Go on, I'll be up in a minute. I love you. I said, I love you. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. Love you, too. I can't believe I was once that young. It seems like yesterday, and it's actually today. There's a part of me that feels like I'm looking at someone else when I watch this coverage. I've managed to see every launch I was a part of. I watched as the Challenger blew apart in the sky, and I thought about trying to warn them, but they'd probably think I was some crazy fellow. And now this is almost the day, that fateful day I went up into the sky and my whole life was changed forever. Mind you, my life didn't turn out bad. A beautiful wife, two kids, and three grandchildren. I'm ready to retire in style. So why do I feel as though I'm missing something? I look at these launches and sometimes I see a complete stranger where I'm standing. And then sometimes I see something I'm missing or missed. Ah, what am I thinking? This is it. This is the life fate handed me. It's a good one as lives go. But I sure do miss the flying, the sense of weightlessness in space, the... Nah. Four, three, two, one. Liftoff. We have liftoff of the shuttle Concordia, the first solo shuttle flight. James Dennings has made history today, folks. Would somebody do me a favor and collect my stomach? I think it should be plastered all over the launch site. Very cute, Jimmy. Concordia is running hot and true. She's handling well, too, but I'm picking up a small imbalance in the stabilizers. It's giving me a little rocking. 
We'll investigate and advise, Concordia. I would appreciate it, Control. I'd hate to see how CNN would cover my demise. Hey, no talk like that, Jimmy. Let's keep it to business. Roger, Control. SDT booster tank set complete and successful. According to readouts here, the stabilizer's going to fail. I'm going to route to secondary units. Try to write it out, Jim. It's too soon into the flight to be switching to second. It's that or abort, Control. I'm going to go with throttle up, and I need those stabilizers. Roger, Concordia. Switching to secondary stabilizers. Preparing for throttle up. Roger, Concordia. Go with throttle up. James, honey, are you all right? I, I, was, I was on the shuttle, and... James, you've been staying up late too many nights watching all those shows about the shuttle program. I think you need to find another hobby. I... Yes, you're right. Marina, have you ever wondered what your life would have been like had we never met? Don't tell me you're having regrets now. No, not regrets. I was just curious. Well, I guess there's always that part of me that wonders what if. What if I had just turned you over to the police? What if I'd gone out with Bobby Kelleher that evening instead of taking a ride by myself in the desert? Everything would be different now. But would it be better? James, what kind of question is that? How could it get any better? I don't know. I was just wondering. Well, stop your wondering and get back to sleep. Let me tell you this. I regret nothing I have ever done. This is my life, James. I'm happy. I'm happy too, love. Very happy. I was just thinking. Well, stop. Yes, dear. Good night. I won't be long, love. I just want to take a little walk. All right, James. Just don't forget you're taking Trisha to the lake today. By the powers vested in me, by the Lord God Almighty, and the state of New Mexico, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. We We three kings of Orient are Trying to light a rubber cigar Kids! Aw, let them have Christmas. James, you're worse than they are. I love you, Daddy. Who give me my allowance if you weren't here? That's his way of saying I love you. You know, Kenny, New York City seems a long way to go to get a college degree. Dad... That's your father's way of saying he's going to miss you, Kenny. I'll miss you too, Dad. Call. I will, especially when I need money. He's your son. That he is. Susan, have I told you how proud I am of you? Always, Daddy. Well, keep making me proud by being the best person you can be with your husband. I like Bob, you know. I know, Daddy. He likes you too. James Dennings was a man who most would say had it all. A lovely wife, a fine family, and a career that took care of them all. And yet this was a man who was never satisfied with what he had. He longed for a life he once knew, and now was taking a gamble in retrieving it. But you know the old saying, you only have one life to live. Dennings was about to learn how powerful that saying was. Okay, this is it. Last chance to back out. Back out? Are you crazy? I've been waiting a long time for this moment. Dreamed about it even longer. I guess... Beside, you'd have a mess of people after your scalp if you pulled out now. I'm not worried about them. I know this base like the back of my hand. Better than the head of security, even. If I wanted to, I could hole up here for weeks, and they'd never be able to find me. Is that so? Then where's a good place to take a lady for a little privacy around here? <laughs> That's one trade secret I'm taking to the grave. 
Okay. Well, you check out green on the suit, James. Good luck. Thanks. Sometimes I find myself asking the same question. Hey, who are you? What are you doing in here? This is a restricted area. No civilians allowed. I... I... This is so strange. I'm calling security. Please, let me explain. I came here to warn you, to tell you not to go on this mission. Let go of me. Are you some kind of nuts? Don't you get smart with me. You never knew when to listen to those who knew better. It's why you were always getting into trouble. You almost didn't get this mission because of it. Who are you? How do you know that? Nothing down here. Let's check out the waiting area. Damn. I thought they hadn't spotted me. So much for knowing this base like the back of my hand. Wait a minute. I don't have a minute. I'm telling you, don't go on this mission. If you do, your life as you know it will change. That's why I'm doing it. I want my life to change. It's not going to change the way you think it will. The fast life, the television appearances, the movie starlets, none of that will happen. Is it that bad? Am I going to die? No, not exactly. So what exactly is going to happen? It's just not what you expected. Life's never what you expect it to be. Otherwise, it wouldn't be life. At least that's what my father was always trying to tell me. Dad. You know my dad? I knew him well once. Then you know what he'd say, don't you? Yeah, I do. Well, what do you know? Some of what the old man was trying to say did get through to me. I guess age doesn't always grant wisdom. What are you talking about? Freeze! Hold it right there, Pops. I don't know how you managed to get this far onto the base, but I'm taking you to the CO to answer some questions. It's easy when you know the base. In fact, I know this place like the back of my hand. If I wanted to, I could hole up here for weeks and you'd never be able to find me. How did you... Come on. Look, let him go. We can't, sir. He was trespassing. I know, I know. But he's a relative of mine. Can't you see the resemblance? Uh, he just got a little lost. Look, take him to the VIP viewing area. James! That's enough out of you, Uncle. I gotta go. You know, my dad gave me this watch for good luck years ago. He died a few months back, and I really miss him. He was the kind of guy who could kick my butt right into place when it got out of line. He never took any guff from me. I forgot to tell him how much he meant to me. Looking at you reminds me of him so much. I Look, I got to do this. It's what I've trained a long time to do. It's, it's what I'm best at. I don't know what's going to happen up there, but it's life. That's my life, my future up there. Your future's here. Now, take care. I've got two watches. That can't be. Wait a minute. Something's wrong. I can feel it. Sorry, sir, but you're going to have to come with me now. But you don't understand. I've got to have this watch with me. I mean, he's got to have this watch with him. There isn't time to get it to him, sir. This way, please. No, wait. Just give me another minute. I can... And we have liftoff. Liftoff of the Earth's first interplanetary mission of the shuttle Concordia. Concordia, you're looking good. Clearing the atmosphere. Booster set in 30 seconds. Roger. I'm reading a slight imbalance in the main discharge tanks. Do you see it? Affirmative. We'll investigate. Booster set in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Control. Left booster is still attached. The charge failed. The rocket is still firing. That's not what happened. Concordia, we're trying to override. I'm out of control. Speed increasing. Something's... have lost contact with Concordia. Telemetry reports the craft disappeared. Sweeps with orbital satellites are proving negative. We're investigating further. Oh my God! What's that car doing in the driveway? What's going on here? Where's Marina's rose garden under the living room window? What's that satellite dish doing on the roof? The lock's been changed. I don't understand this. Yes? Uh, I'm sorry. I think I... That is, I... Are you all right? No. No, I'm not. Is Marina here? Marina? Marina, my wife. I, I'm sorry. I thought this was our house. 
Mister, this has been my house for the last six months. My husband and I bought it when we needed more room. I've got to go. Wait. I think you'd better leave. My husband will be home soon. Oh yes, of course. I'm sorry. Thank you. It's a beautiful house. The soil in the front yard is perfect for growing roses. Goodbye. Yes, operator. I'd like to make a person-to-person -person call to a Mr. Allen Chambers. My name is James Dennings. No, I'm not related to him. Yes, it's very tragic what happened to him. Won't accept the charges? Please, operator, would you let me through a moment? It's very important. Do it for the other James, huh? Mr. Chambers? No, th this isn't a joke. My name is James Dennings. You have a daughter named Marina. Yes, I was wondering if she was there. Married? Fifteen years. I see. I. No. No, she wouldn't remember me now. Thank you. They say the grass is always greener on the other side. James Dennings had it all. A wife family, a career where he could care for them. These are things most people would give up anything for, and yet James gave them up in the hopes of chasing a dream. That dream cost him everything, including his future. It is a sad lesson to learn, and who knew that something as simple as this watch not being in the right place at the right time could change everything. It's just a simple watch. Or is it? A sad tale. One of many, I know, having run this store for so many years. Perhaps you'll stop in one day and I'll tell you another tale. But for now, I must put out my closed sign and turn out the lights. It's time for me to go. Till then, take care. Today's story featured Brad Vincent as young James Dennings, William Brown as older James Dennings, Vicki Miller as Marina, David Crawford, NASA Control, and Mel Hart as the old curator. Also appearing, Robert Quayas, Jim Vilk, Jim Heaton, Sarah Muxadlo, David Binkley Jr., Valerie Holman, Rachel Holman, Laura Binkley and David Binkley. The Watch was written by John Astrew. Original music was written and performed by David Crawford. Theme music for WCRS Radio Stage was written by David Crawford and Tom Holman. 
WCRS radio stage is produced in Akron, Ohio by David Binkley and David Crawford. I'm your host, Joe Kelly, asking you to join us the next time we open the curtain on WCRS radio stage. to come to us. Inspector Gregson, do your duty. Edwina Carpenter, you are charged with the murder of your husband Augustus Jonathan Carpenter on the 3rd of September of this year. Go, Ed, and cuff me. I'm as guilty as sin itself. Holmes, she seems awfully eager to be incarcerated, don't you think? Yes, Watson. As I suspected she would. It is coming. Isn't it, Edwin? I don't know what you're talking about. Just, just, just take me away. I'll confess to whatever you have. But steady on, Holmes. It? It being the instrument of murder itself. <laughs> Watson, I suggest we move away from the door. What in heaven's name? No, Saints, protect me! Dormi! Hey! How did you do that? You stopped it, dead in its tracks, you did. Quite elementary when you know Latin, my dear. I simply told it to go to sleep. I say, Holmes, you still astound me to this day. Take her away, Inspector. You have your murderer and the weapon now. Right, come along. We have your accomplice at the station already. An accomplice? Yet another mechanical device? No. The creator of this clockwork feeling machine, Dr. Eric Busby, scientist and creator of the steam-powered dock workers, seen recently loading and unloading chips along London's ports. Mrs. Carpenter had an ongoing liaison with the once good doctor, and they concocted a plan to have this particular machine malfunction and kill her husband while working on the docks, seemingly as an accident. Although, as the doctor realized, he was but a pawn in Mrs. Carpenter's attempt to gain her husband's properties. And so he gave the automaton new instructions. She's been out running it for hours. Dr. Busby felt regret for his actions and confessed to me earlier today. And he gave you the phrase which rendered the beast helpless. No, Watson. It was a valid answer based on deductive reasoning, intuitively ascertained by my knowledge as to the nature of mechanical devices and the congruent psychology of the scientific mind. Ah, so in other words, you guessed. Precisely. Holmes, you're amazing. I know. All Better Audio in association with the 4077 presents Victoria, Empress of the Universe Episode 1 Murder in Space Most Foul Written and produced by Victor Aurelius
Of all the many adventures I have had with the world's greatest detective, Sherlock Holmes, the one that began today would be our most unique of all. For not only would Holmes be the greatest detective on Earth, but beyond our world as well. Come. Ah, uh, good morning, Mrs. Hudson. Sorry to disturb you, Dr. Watson, but there's a messenger at the door. A royal messenger for Mr. Holmes. Well, send him in. Dr. Watson, dear brother. Oh, Mycroft, oh, it's been a long time. So, now you are a royal messenger, Mycroft? Oh, I've never been able to ascertain your true vocation. Well, we've always assumed that you have a sordid connection with the men in white bowler hats, or some other secret organization. MI2, perhaps? MI3, maybe? If I did, Watson, I think my taxes would be somewhat reduced. Her Majesty's Secret Service could not afford my wages. So, dear brother, you are here to escort us to Buckingham Palace for tea with Queen Victoria and Prince Albert? Nearly correct, brother. There may or may not be tea. Oh... Gentlemen, your speed is greatly appreciated. This is a matter of grave importance to the Empire and to my personal friend, Lady Perrington. Lady Perrington, my deepest condolences for the passing of your husband. He was a brave man to give his life in the name of the British Empire. I also wish to extend my condolences, Lady Perrington. Thank you both. Your Majesty, I would like to retire to my chambers. Of course, Penelope. <laughs> Albert, would you escort her, please? Yeah, my queen. Your Majesty, I briefed them during the journey, but only in as far as I was at liberty to divulge. I understand, Mycroft. You may leave now. Oh, you, yes, Your Majesty. If you gentlemen would follow me. Incredible! No, Mr. Holmes. I welcome the noted doctor's opinion. Uh, this is the most advanced medical facility I've ever seen. I would even say it's decades beyond my own knowledge. That is because it is. Our empire has become more and more advanced since the Britannia was launched six months ago to Mars. Lord Parrington and his dignitaries reached the Red Planet, planting our flag, held audience with the Martian Queen, and tendered a relationship that will benefit both of our worlds. I suspected there was more than the press had led us to believe. Indeed, Mr. Holmes. Your Majesty, is Lord Perrington's body beneath this sheet? Yes, Dr. Watson. You may examine the body if you wish. Yes, Watson. I think you will be quite surprised by what you see. Mr. Holmes, I sense you have a suspicion as to... Yes, Your Majesty. My nose is never wrong. Hmm. I don't see an entry wound or any external cause of death. I had heard he was shot. Obviously, with a Martian weapon that does not require a metal projectile. Electrical, or perhaps even... Um... Your Majesty, I would suggest that you move away from the body. About ten feet would be advised. You as well, Holmes. Now, I always carry a plate of film with me for photographic evidence. No camera? You merely place the film plate on his chest? I think that is enough time. It's clear. If the 
everything was unexposed. It would be black and opaque. Radioactivity? And there is more, I'm afraid, Your Majesty. More? I demand an explanation. Your Majesty, I'm afraid that to give you a proper explanation, Dr. Watson and myself need to take a voyage. You, you're not proposing. Mars, my dear Watson, we must journey to Mars. Gentlemen, your stateroom is here, Mr. Holmes. Dr. Watson, you are just across the corridor. Your chests and bags are already inside. Oh, thank you, young man, for your trouble. A shilling? Thank you, sir. It's very much like an ocean voyage. I look forward to viewing the stars from the upper deck. Well, I must unpack if we are to keep our dining appointment at the captain's table, Holmes. Not so fast, Watson. What is it, Holmes? Just... Stand away from my door. Uh, perhaps to the side. As I suspected. Well, I see you at the captain's table, old man. And I should expect the same greeting in my room? Um, Holmes? Hmm. I'm a bit disappointed. <laughs> and the boom trampled into my mama's kitchen to escape. Whatever happened, Mr. Bush? Well, Duchess, my mama. Turn from cooking up the best chicken west of the Mississippi and spit out her cigar and blasted the beast right betwixt the eyes with her sawed off shotgun and blew its head clean all over the place. <laughs> How amusing. Hey, you're that English man, Dr. Angel. Uh, Dr. John Watson, yes. Horace Bush is my name. Texas, Longhorn, and oil is my game. It's a pleasure. So you come up here to see the moon while we pass by. Yes, it's been a fascination of mine since I was a child. This glass enclosure is breathtaking. You can clean see forever. Oh my. It's... Humbling, to say the least. You can almost touch the moon's face. Lord James, your daddy done did some righteous work when he carved out that piece of rock. Dinner is now being served. Are you coming to supper, Dr. Watson? I'm powerful hungry myself. I will be along momentarily. Suit to say? Small prime rib for me. Fascinating. What is that? A ship flying, pirate colors, and a skull and crossbone flag. It disappeared. Mr. Bush, did you see that? Uh, see what, Watson? Uh, oh, never you mind, Holmes. Probably just my nerves playing havoc with my mind. You did drag me on a ship bound for another world. Who knows what hallucinations one might endure? Quite. Especially pirate ships disappearing around the dark side of the moon. One would think one crazed. A eh, what, Watson? Thank you, one and all, for traveling with us aboard the Britannia. I'm your captain, Marcus Bowman. 
The voyage to Mars will be made as comfortable as possible. Now that we've cleared the Earth's moon, we can boost our power to full steam ahead. Thank you, thank you. Now, our trip to Mars will be made quicker than our last voyage to the Red Planet. While there, we procured plans for an advanced engine component. Our crew tells me that it has been introduced to our engines, and our trip will be noticeably shorter. And what component has been added to the engines, Captain? Oh, I see the renowned Sherlock Holmes has already found a mystery to solve. (laughs) Not to worry, Mr. Holmes. Our engineers are hard at work, and the transformation will go as smooth as... No need to panic, ladies and gentlemen. The lights will be back on in a moment, I assure you. (laughs) Oh, you blackguard! Mr. Holmes, is that lady all right? The lady? Are you all right? Oh, yes, my dear man. This cad next to me cannot keep his hands off my ample bosoms. I know they are tasty, but one should not attempt to sample unless one is asked. I did nothing of the kind. Oh, Maynard! As long as you are unscathed, dear lady. Dame Helena Fitch, Mr. Holmes. See? Dame Helena? (laughs) The two and only. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, Dame Helena Fitch, who will perform for your dining pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Who is she? Comedienne. World famous. Strange that I've never heard of her before. Observe, Watson. Observe. Uh, uh, handsome and distinguished captain. Inform me that he is from one of the most prestigious clans of the Scottish Highlands, as you can see by the size of his sporen. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the photograph in the... London Times of the captain sitting beside the queen. He forgot to place his sporin so the royal jewels would not be showing. Oh, <laughs> I don't. almost didn't notice the queen. <laughs> Very good. So Queen Victoria has sent the Britannia to Mars once again. I see many dignitaries sitting here who are no doubt going to squeeze a few pounds from the Martian queen. <laughs> Not that Victoria could stand to gain a few pounds or so. Oh. <laughs> she could actually stand to lose a few stone <laughs> the size of Gibraltar. <laughs> well, Victoria herself was not able to make the trip. The captain was afraid that her gravitational pull would have brought the moon along with us to Mars. <laughs> what? Do you recognize the man who is laughing? I believe it is Baron Klutzenfeld of Germany. Didn't he recently sign an agreement with Prince Halikam of Persia for rights to a large portion of barren desert? Hm. What would one want with all that sand? Indeed, Watson. Now, enjoy your meal. We will be quite busy this evening, and you will need your strength. Telegraph our base that we have arrived from Persia. Aye, Captain Wells. Should I wake our prisoners? No, Roberts. Let them sleep until we talk on the moon. There won't be much time for them to sleep once we start assembling our weapon. Welcome, honoured guests. Now, tonight, we have a very special treat just for our dignitaries. Direct from the London stage, where this production has achieved the highest accolades, I present to you, Scenes from Faust. This should be an exciting performance, Watson. Uh, yes, Holmes, I agree. 
I do enjoy a good opera. Wait a moment. That stage piece, the one there, center stage, that's not part of the Faust performance. It's from Mussorgsky's Coven Chechina. Evacuate the theater. Holmes, no. Don't touch it. I know perfectly well what I am doing, Watson. Observe. Holmes! Victoria, Empress of the Universe, Episode 1, Murder in Space, Most Foul, was written, directed, and produced by Victor Aurelius. Featured in the cast were Sally Wiggett as Edwina Carpenter, Jeff Niles as Sherlock Holmes, Wayne Hayward as Inspector Gregson, Ellie Hirschman as Dr. John Watson, Victor Aurelius as It, the Killer Robot, Lisanne Hayward as Mrs. Hudson, Jeff Niles as Mycroft Holmes. Lisa Duchamp as Queen Victoria. Sally Wiggett as Lady Penelope Paddington. Jeff Niles as Prince Albert. Brian Reed as the Britannia Ship Steward. Jeff Niles as Horace Bush. Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard as Duchess von Alderstein. Joel Nesbitt as Captain Marcus Bowman. Dame Helena Fitch as herself. Alex Gilmore as Man at Dinner. Gwendolyn Jensen Woodard as Woman at Dinner. Gary Coburn as Baron Klutzenfeld. T.D. Kelly as Pirate Captain Jacob Wells. And Michael Romero as First Mate Roberts. Music by Kevin McLeod. Sound design by Victor Aurelius. Copyright The 4077th and All Better Audio 2012. This has been an All Better Audio production. This production was set together by, by the Four Seven Seven Seven, seven, seven. Make, make the audio, audio sound, sound all better. Thanks for listening to tonight's show, and make sure that you come back next week on the Sonic Society. And find us at all the right places on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and of course, sonicsociety.org. For Jack Ward, I'm David Alt, saying goodnight. Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. Monday Matinee on the Mutual Audio Network always means a potpourri of entertainment, drama, comedy, action. Whew, it really stimulates the mind, don't it? Well, a great way to get your mind back into neutral gear is to catch Bells in the Battery on Friday Follies and Sunday Showcase. Silliness is the best cure for mental stimulation. Bells in the Battery. Always odd, always family-friendly. If only I could convince my family to listen to it.